Hello and welcome to the Color Art Blog Hop. I'm Linda Ann Smith and I'm on the Color Art Design Team. Our theme for this blog hop is shoes and when my friend was about to throw away her boots I said, oh no, don't do that. To make your own boots similar to these, you will need a discarded pair of cowboy boots, white gesso, sewing trims and lace, spool of beaded craft trim, radiant rain shimmering mist, silks acrylic glazes, primary elements artist pigments mixed with primary elements clear gloss medium, radiant gels dimensional paint, your choice of strong glue, seed beads, and gloss varnish that is used to seal acrylic paints. One of these days people are going to stop looking at me funny when I ask for their trash. My friend was wearing these boots one night and the faux leather just kept flaking off all night long. She started out with a brown boot and it ended up like this. Uh, she used a magic marker to try to cover up some of the stuff and finally gave up some of the white to mask it so it wouldn't show up. Um, but then I tried painting a little flower up here and that didn't really work. I was gonna just start painting under so I decided to use my white gesso and gesso under the entire boot to give it a good surface for me to work on to paint on. Since I decided to completely change the color of the boot, the white gesso was a good choice. And I dug through my sewing trims to see what I had available to decorate these. I found a couple of types of glue and some decorative trim and some white lace and I immediately started gluing these to the boot. I gessoed under a lot of the trim as I went, but this just didn't seem like enough. If I was going to turn these into art, they needed a lot more embellishment. Do you have a box full of things stored away that you will never use or wear or get out and display just because your grandmother made them or someone in your family? I finally chose one of grandmother's old collars and cut some of the lace off of them. It seemed perfect for this project. Please don't scold me for this because now I'll see that lace every day and it will remind me of my grandmother. And I admit I had a hard time deciding to cut up grandma's collar but it wasn't doing anyone any good and it was just sitting in a box and I wasn't even seeing it. These lace pieces were white before I sprayed them with Radiant Rain's Teal Zircon. I took those pieces outside to dry while I worked on the boots again. And here I used a leftover part of Grandmother's collar to mask off some of the area of the boot so paint wouldn't get on it as I, paint, as I sprayed the paint. That scrap fabric became beautifully colored with the mist that I sprayed, and you can bet you'll see it in a future art project that I do. This is Radiant Rain's Elderberry that I used on some of the parts of the boot. That really helped bring out the textures of the lace. Here I switched to Silk's Acrylic Glazes in the Teal Zircon again. That's one of my favorite colors. It was my intent at first to avoid the silver beading, but as I played with it, I liked the way it looked when I let the teal zircon go right over the beading. When I'm painting anything, I tend to go with mostly cool colors or mostly warm colors. Obviously, this is gonna be mostly cool colors. Around the sole of the boot and on the heel and up and down the sides, I used uh, primary elements blue flame mixed with primary elements clear glaze medium. And I touched up the toe of the boot with a little bit of this that was watered down. I often show my work outdoors and it's easy to get caught in a rainstorm here so to be sure my colors didn't bleed I covered all the paint with a coat of varnish. The flower trim in the middle here is from Hobby Lobby. It's from the sewings, sewing department. Uh, it at one time had three rows of flowers and I find sometimes that instead of going to the craft areas if you'll go to different departments that you can cut me out more economically. I don't like to waste my color art products, so I took a Ziploc bag and sprayed this flower embellishment inside of a Ziploc bag. I added a few more rows of the beaded trim around the sole and the heel of the boot and also around uh, below and above the beads that I had painted under. I also glued on the trim from the collar. My grandmother would never guess that a piece of her collar was going to be on a boot. But no problem, I have lots of collars that she made. By this time the flowers were dry and I glued them on top of the lace and down the side and added a little 
piece of the uh, silver trim in the center of each flower. I also placed some of these flowers in some awkward places that just didn't seem to have the right um, balance. After that, I thought I was finished, but then I started adding beads to the center of the vertical trim that I had placed on the sides of the boots. I put a bead in the center of each of the circles. I'm not sure these boots are made for walking, but they sure are made for displaying. Be careful what you ask for. I ask a photographer friend with a wicked sense of humor to get me just one good picture of these boots. And the one good picture turned into a whole photo shoot. I think he went all over Oklahoma. I think he enjoyed photographing them as much as I enjoyed making them, and hopefully as much as you will enjoy the following show. Sit back, watch, have a good time. Thank you for watching.